I booby trapped my ship. If we don't stop them before they get to the Stargate, they'll both die. The television series, Buck Rogers, was a popular American science fiction adventure that aired on NBC from 1979 to 1981. Produced by Universal Studios, the show was based on the 1928 character Buck Rogers, created by Philip Nolan. Developed by Glenn Larson and Leslie Stevens, the series and its subsequent film brought the comic strip hero to life for a new generation. The story of a 20th century astronaut who awakens in the 25th century? The show explores themes of time travel, adventure, and the future of humanity. Oh. Boy, you little jerk. In 1979, a made-for-TV film was released theatrically, introducing the world to Buck Rogers. This film, simply referred to as the pilot or the show's initial release, served a dual purpose. It not only functioned as a standalone movie, but also laid the groundwork for the weekly television series that would follow later that same year. The theatrical film, Buck Rogers in the 25th Century, proved to be a success, drawing in an impressive 21 million at the North American box office. Audiences were captivated by the story of a 20th century astronaut who awakens in the 25th century after being frozen in space. The film's popularity set the stage for the transition to a weekly series, with the pilot episode split into two parts, titled Awakening. This two-part episode served as the perfect introduction to the world of Buck Rogers, allowing viewers to become familiar with the characters and the futuristic setting. The success of the film and the engaging storytelling of the Awakening episodes paved the way for the weekly series, which continued to explore the adventures of Buck Rogers in the 25th century. In the 1979 TV series, several scenes were adjusted for television, leading to the removal of adult dialogue and the addition of new and extended scenes. These changes were particularly noticeable in Buck's new apartment, which was featured prominently throughout the series. The first season of the show consisted of 24 episodes, with four of those episodes being two-parters. This format allowed for a lighter tone and a more positive depiction of future Earth, creating a captivating and enjoyable experience for viewers. Throughout the first season, the show's writers focused on creating a balance between action, adventure, and humor. This approach helped to distinguish the series from other science fiction shows of the time, and it contributed to the show's enduring popularity. The writers also took care to develop well-rounded characters, each with their own unique personalities and motivations. One of the most notable aspects of the first season was the depiction of future Earth. Rather than focusing on the dystopian, and post-apocalyptic themes that were popular in science fiction at the time, the show presented a more positive and optimistic view of the future. This was evident in the design of the show's sets and costumes, which were bright, colorful, and sleek. Another key element of the first season was the use of two-parter episodes. These episodes allowed the writers to explore complex storylines and to develop the characters in greater depth. The two-parter episodes also helped to build suspense and anticipation, keeping viewers engaged and invested in the show. Despite the changes made for television, the first season of the series remained faithful to the spirit of the original film. The show's writers and producers were careful to preserve the core elements of the film, while also adding new and exciting elements to keep viewers engaged. The result was a show that was both familiar and fresh, appealing to both fans of the original film and new viewers alike. In conclusion, the first season of the 1979 TV series was a significant and memorable moment in the history of science fiction television. With its unique blend of action, adventure, and humor, the show offered something for everyone, and its positive depiction of future Earth helped to set it apart from other shows of the time. The use of two-parter episodes and the development of well-rounded characters also contributed to the show's success, making it a beloved and enduring classic. On route to El Deberon. You best go to our alternate plan. In the 1979 TV series, the future Earth is depicted as a thriving planet with human civilization extending far beyond its boundaries. The inner city, known as New Chicago, presents a bustling and lively environment symbolizing the progress and development of human society. The show portrays Earth as not just limited to its urban centers, but also featuring lush and verdant landscapes outside of the cities. The spread of human civilization across the planet and into the stars showcases the vastness and diversity of the future world. 
A significant means of travel between stars in the series is through stargates, which are artificial portals that resemble wormholes. These portals provide a quick and efficient way to travel across vast distances in space. However, some characters, including the main protagonist, find the experience of traveling through the stargates physically unpleasant. Despite this, the stargates serve as a crucial element in the exploration and expansion of human civilization into the cosmos. Fortunate for us, you care so much for the Terran woman. In the filming of the 1979 TV series, the production team relied on a mix of existing structures and stock footage to create the futuristic setting. To depict buildings of the future on Earth, they utilized stock shots of pavilions from Expo 67 and the Bonaventure Hotel in downtown LA. This approach allowed them to establish a distinctive and advanced look for the show's environment without the need for extensive set construction. The opening title sequence of the series was equally noteworthy, featuring stock footage from actual space missions. Specifically, it included clips from the launches of Apollo 4 and Apollo 6, lending an air of authenticity to the depiction of space travel. By incorporating real-life space exploration footage, the show's creators aim to enhance viewer engagement and immerse the audience in the thrilling world of interstellar adventure. Damage is minimal. You don't sound all right. And follow us into the flight hangar 3. And keep up this time. The production of the TV series was quite costly, with an overall budget of around 800,000 per hour of airtime. This significant investment was reflected in the show's visual effects and set designs, which were impressive for the time. However, the first season of the series did not receive much critical acclaim, despite its reasonable popularity with viewers. The lead actor, Gerard, was a vocal critic of the show's creative direction. He frequently clashed with producers and the network, advocating for more serious storytelling. Gerard's criticisms were not unfounded, as the show often prioritized flashy visuals over character development and thoughtful narratives. Despite these challenges, the series remained popular with audiences and developed a cult following. The show's blend of science fiction and adventure appealed to viewers, and the campy tone and over-the-top special effects became part of its charm. Gerard's criticisms, while valid, did not detract from his impressive performance as the lead actor. His portrayal of the title character was nuanced and compelling, adding depth to a character that could have easily been one-dimensional. In summary, the first season of the TV series had a substantial budget, but received mixed reviews from critics. The lead actor, Gerard, was a vocal critic of the show's creative direction, advocating for more serious storytelling. Despite these challenges, the series remained popular with audiences and developed a cult following. Gerard's performance as the lead actor was a highlight of the show, adding depth and nuance to the character of Buck Rogers. His name is Tweaky. Yes, and that thing hanging around his neck is Theo. Exo the filming of the TV series was not without its share of on-set tensions. One of the main sources of conflict was the lead actor's refusal to perform comical lines. This led to tensions behind the scenes, with threats of legal action from the network if the actor continued to hinder production. The situation became so serious that it delayed the production of the second season. The tensions on set were further exacerbated by external factors. In 1980, the actor's strike brought the filming of the series to a standstill. The strike had a significant impact on the production schedule, causing delays and adding to the already tense atmosphere on set. Despite these challenges, the cast and crew were able to complete the series and create a show that has endured in popularity. The comical elements, despite the initial resistance, became a beloved part of the series and added to its charm. The show's ability to overcome these obstacles is a testament to the dedication and talent of all involved. The welfare of your friend. What friend? The brunette with the fancy jewelry. The one who tried to trap me. In the second season of the TV series, Wilma Deering's character underwent significant changes. Initially introduced as a strong and independent military woman, Deering's character was softened to appear more feminine. This shift moved her away from her militaristic image, presenting a more traditionally feminine role model. The series also experienced a change in the voice of the character Tweaky. Originally voiced by Mel Blanc, Tweaky's voice was briefly replaced due to Blanc's illness. However, the show did not provide any explanation for the sudden change in the character's voice. As a result, viewers were left to wonder about the reason behind the unexpected shift. Overall, these changes in character 
and voice contributed to the evolving narrative of the show, keeping audiences engaged and curious about what would happen next. Olive. And as I was running for help, I learned that others had already found... In the second season of the popular TV series, viewers were introduced to more serious themes compared to the first. Concepts such as evolution, ecology, pollution, war, nuclear power, and religion were explored, giving the show a more mature and thought-provoking tone. During the casting process for the second season, the producers had initially considered Kurt Russell for the lead role of Buck. However, Russell opted to pursue movie roles instead, eventually landing a breakthrough role in the film Escape from New York. This decision led to the casting of Gil Gerard as Buck Rogers, who went on to become synonymous with the character. Despite the change in lead actor, the second season of the show continued to captivate audiences with its engaging storylines and impressive special effects. The themes explored in the second season were particularly noteworthy as they touched on important issues that were relevant in the 1970s and continue to be relevant today. Overall, the second season of the show was a success, thanks in part to the serious themes it explored and the talented cast that brought the characters to life. While Kurt Russell may have been the initial choice for the role of Buck, Gil Gerard's portrayal of the character became iconic and helped to solidify the show's place in television history. An increasing frequency of ionized particles rising rapidly. Aaron Gray, already an established model, ventured into acting and secured the role of Wilma Deering in the show. Initially, she had reservations about appearing in spandex uniforms. However, her portrayal of Deering became a highlight of the series. Gray's character was a strong and capable woman challenging gender norms of the time. Her performance resonated with audiences, making her a fan favorite. Despite the show's cancellation in 1981, Aaron Gray's role as Wilma Deering remains a memorable part of television history. <laughs>《1979 TV series, Buck Rogers, remains significant today due to its impact on science fiction television. The show's innovative special effects and futuristic costumes set it apart from previous sci-fi series. It also introduced the concept of a space opera to a broader audience, combining elements of adventure, romance, and humor. Buck Rogers had a lasting legacy in popular culture. The character of Buck Rogers had already appeared in comic strips, novels, and radio shows since the 1920s. However, the TV series brought the character to a new generation and solidified his place in the annals of science fiction. Moreover, the show's themes of space exploration and discovery resonate with contemporary audiences, with renewed interest in space travel and the search for extraterrestrial life. Buck Rogers' vision of the future still feels relevant. The show's diverse cast and strong female characters also contribute to its enduring appeal. Twiki, the robot sidekick, and Hawk, the silent warrior, became fan favorites and paved the way for more complex and nuanced portrayals of non-human characters in later sci-fi series. In conclusion, Buck Rogers' impact on science fiction television and popular culture cannot be overstated. Its legacy continues to influence contemporary media, and its themes of space exploration and discovery remain relevant today. Help is on its way. Mother, it is useless. The casting process for the 1979 TV series Buck Rogers in the 25th century was a thrilling journey, bringing together a diverse and talented cast. Gil Gerard, who played the lead role of Buck Rogers, was chosen after a series of auditions. Gerard's charm and rugged good looks, combined with his acting prowess, made him an ideal fit for the role. For the part of Colonel Wilma Deering, the producers sought a strong and capable actress. Erin Gray, with her striking presence and impressive resume, won the role. Her chemistry with Gerard was undeniable, adding depth and authenticity to their on-screen relationship. The role of Tweaky, the robot sidekick, was a challenging one. The producers wanted an actor who could bring warmth and humor to the character. Felix Silla, a seasoned actor and stuntman, was ultimately cast. His physicality and comedic timing brought Tweaky to life, making him a fan favorite. Pamela Hensley, known for her work in Matt Helm and The Six Million Dollar Man, was cast as Princess Ardala. Her regal presence and acting skills made her the perfect choice for the villainous princess. The casting of Dr. Theopolis, the floating computer, was a unique process. The producers wanted a distinctive voice for the character. Mel Blanc, the legendary voice actor, was brought on board. 
His iconic voice added a touch of humor and charm to the character. The casting of Buck Rogers in the 25th century was a careful process, with each actor chosen for their unique talents and abilities. The chemistry between the cast members, combined with their individual skills, created a dynamic and engaging series that has stood the test of time. Get it, older man! <laughs> you ticklish! <laughs> Get him to tell us what is wrong! The directorial vision behind the 1979 TV series Buck Rogers in the 25th century was shaped by its director, Daniel Haller. Haller's approach to the series was influenced by his background in art direction and production design, which gave the show a unique visual style. He aimed to create a world that was both futuristic and relatable, blending elements of science fiction with a sense of humor and adventure. Haller drew inspiration from a variety of sources, including classic comic strips and serials, as well as the pulp fiction of the 1930s and 40s. He sought to capture the spirit of these stories while updating them for a modern audience. Haller's style was characterized by his use of bold colors, dynamic compositions, and a sense of movement and energy. Collaboration was key to Haller's process. He worked closely with the cast and crew to bring his vision to life, fostering a creative and supportive environment on set. Haller's collaborative approach extended to the writers and producers with whom he worked closely to develop the show's storylines and characters. One of Haller's most significant contributions to the series was his work with the show's visual effects team. Together, they created a wide range of futuristic gadgets, vehicles, and settings, from the sleek and stylish Space Academy to the rugged and dangerous surface of planet Mars. Haller's attention to detail and commitment to creating a believable an immersive world helped to set Buck Rogers in the 25th century apart from other science fiction shows of the time. In summary, Daniel Haller's directorial vision for Buck Rogers in the 25th century was shaped by his background in art direction and production design, as well as his love of classic comic strips and pulp fiction. His collaborative approach and commitment to creating a believable and immersive world helped to make the show a success leaving a lasting impact on the world of science fiction television. I talked to her briefly before she was escorted over to your <clears throat> apartment. Yeah, well, don't get the idea. The production of the 1979 TV series, Buck Rogers in the 25th Century, was a massive undertaking. The set design was a critical aspect of the show's success, and the team pulled out all the stops to create a futuristic world. The main setting was a spacecraft called the Searcher, which was a marvel of design and engineering, it featured sleek lines, advanced technology, and a spacious interior that was both functional and aesthetically pleasing. The set design extended beyond the searcher, with the team creating an entire cityscape for the 25th century. The city, called New Chicago, was a blend of modern and futuristic architecture, with towering skyscrapers, neon lights, and advanced transportation systems. The team used innovative techniques to create the cityscape, including matte paintings and miniature models, the production faced several logistical challenges, primarily due to the complexity of the sets and the sheer number of locations. The team had to build and maintain multiple sets, including the Searcher, New Chicago, and various other locations such as laboratories, living quarters, and public spaces. Additionally, the show required a large cast and crew, which added to the logistical challenges. One of the most innovative techniques employed during production was the use of chroma key compositing also known as green screen technology. This technique allowed the team to superimpose actors onto backgrounds that were created digitally, giving the illusion of complex and expensive sets. This technology was still in its infancy in the late 1970s, and Buck Rogers in the 25th century was one of the first shows to use it extensively. The production team also employed other innovative techniques, such as using video monitors instead of traditional rear projection screens. This allowed for a more realistic, an immersive experience for the viewers. The team also used motion control cameras to create smooth and precise camera movements which added to the overall production value. Despite the logistical challenges and innovative techniques, the production of Buck Rogers in the 25th century was a resounding success. The show's futuristic sets, innovative techniques, and engaging storyline captured the imagination of viewers and solidified its place in television history. The creation of the Buck Rogers in the 25th century score and soundtrack was a collaborative effort between composers Stu Phillips and Jerry Goldsmith. 
The music they crafted perfectly complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the 1979 TV series. Stu Phillips, known for his work on Battlestar Galactica, brought his expertise in creating epic and memorable themes. He composed the iconic Buck Rogers theme, which captured the spirit of adventure and optimism of the show. Phillips aimed to create music that would resonate with audiences, stating, I wanted to give the audience something they could walk away singing or humming. Jerry Goldsmith, an accomplished film composer, contributed to the soundtrack with his unique style. He composed the dramatic and emotional cues that accompanied the series' more intense moments. Goldsmith's music added depth and complexity to the narrative, enhancing the emotional impact of the scenes. The score and soundtrack were designed to complement the futuristic setting of the show. Phillips and Goldsmith incorporated electronic elements and synthesizers to create a distinct sound that evoked the 25th century. The music also featured orchestral arrangements, blending traditional and modern sounds to create a unique audio landscape. The composers and musicians involved in the creation of the Buck Rogers and the 25th century score and soundtrack aimed to enhance the narrative and emotional tone of the series. Their efforts resulted in a memorable and captivating soundtrack that has endured as a testament to their prowess. The music, much like the show itself, transcended its time, leaving a lasting impact on the world of science fiction television. The woman from Earth's defense director hasn't been found yet. One of the most iconic scenes in the 1979 TV series Buck Rogers in the 25th century is the opening credit sequence. The sequence, directed by George Ogilvie, features a stunning display of visual effects as the camera swoops through a futuristic cityscape and introduces the viewer to the show's protagonist, Buck Rogers. The sequence is set to a rousing, iconic theme song by composer Stu Phillips, which further adds to the sense of excitement and adventure. The opening sequence is a perfect example of the show's blend of science fiction and action adventure, and it sets the tone for the rest of the series. The use of sweeping camera movements and dynamic visual effects creates a sense of wonder and excitement, while the theme song helps to establish the show's identity and make it memorable for audiences. Another iconic scene from the series is the episode Awakening, in which Buck Rogers is first introduced to the 25th century. Directed by Daniel Haller, the episode features a memorable performance by Gil Gerard as Buck Rogers, as he grapples with the shock of being transported two centuries into the future. The scene in which Buck first emerges from his suspended animation chamber is particularly memorable, as he takes in the strange new world around him with a mix of awe and confusion. According to Gerard, the scene was a challenge to film, as he had to convey a range of emotions in a single take. It was a tough scene to shoot, because I had to go from being completely disoriented to being curious, and then determined all in one shot, Gerard recalls. But I think it worked out well, and it's one of my favorite scenes in the series. The cinematography in this scene is also noteworthy, as the use of low-key lighting and close-up shots helps to emphasize Buck's sense of isolation and confusion. The use of color is also striking, as the bright, futuristic sets and costumes contrast sharply with the dark, moody lighting. Overall, the iconic scenes in Buck Rogers in the 25th century are marked by a sense of adventure, excitement, and visual flair. The show's blend of science fiction and action-adventure, combined with strong performances and striking cinematography, have helped to make it a beloved classic among fans of the genre. Oh, please! What are you waiting for? Pull her out of there! The 1979 TV series Buck Rogers in the 25th century had a significant cultural and social impact, captivating audiences with its vision of the future. The show's protagonist, astronaut Buck Rogers, was cryogenically frozen and awakened in the 25th century, allowing viewers to explore a world transformed by technology and social change. Buck Rogers resonated with audiences seeking escape and adventure in the aftermath of the 1970s. The series offered a hopeful vision of the future, where humanity had survived and even thrived despite numerous challenges. This optimism was a welcome contrast to the dystopian narratives that dominated science fiction at the time. The show also contributed to the growing popularity of science fiction in pop culture. Buck Rogers helped to establish the genre's visual language, with its spacecraft, laser guns, and high-tech gadgets becoming enduring symbols of the future. The series' success paved the way for other iconic science fiction shows, such as Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica. Moreover, Buck Rogers tackled relevant social 
and cultural themes, such as the role of technology in society and the potential consequences of humanity's actions. The show explored the dangers of unchecked technological progress, as well as the importance of ethical decision-making in a rapidly changing world. These themes continue to resonate today as we grapple with issues such as climate change, artificial intelligence, and genetic engineering. In summary, Buck Rogers in the 25th Century was a groundbreaking TV series that left an indelible mark on pop culture. Its vision of the future, optimistic tone, and thoughtful exploration of relevant themes continue to inspire and captivate audiences to this day. When the operation is ended, you'll be brought out of the hypnosis, and you'll not remember anything. Upon its release in 1979, the TV series Buck Rogers in the 25th Century received mixed reviews from critics. Some praised the show's visual effects and adventure spirit, while others criticized its writing and acting. The Los Angeles Times called the series a delightful surprise, highlighting its lavish production design and witty script. The paper also commended Gil Gerard, who played the lead role of Buck Rogers, for his charm and self-deprecating humor. However, the New York Times was less enthusiastic, dismissing the show as a routine, unimaginative space opera. The paper criticized the writing as sloppy, and the acting as wooden. Despite the mixed reviews, Buck Rogers in the 25th century was a hit with audiences. The series debuted to strong ratings, and remained a consistent performer throughout its two-season run. The show also received several award nominations. At the 1980 Emmy Awards, it was nominated for Outstanding Art Direction for a series, and Outstanding Costume Design for a series. The following year, it received a nomination for Outstanding Achievement in Makeup. The accolades for Buck Rogers in the 25th century were a testament to the hard work and dedication of the cast and crew. The Emmy nominations in particular recognized the show's exceptional production values and visual style. For the actors, the nominations were a validation of their talent and commitment to their roles. Gerard's nomination for Outstanding Lead Actor in a drama series at the 1980 Golden Globe Awards was a highlight of his career, and he remained proud of his work on the show. Overall, Buck Rogers in the 25th century may not have been a critical darling, but it was a beloved and enduring piece of science fiction television. Its accolades and nominations were a testament to its quality and impact and a reminder of the show's lasting legacy. Nice try, Enro. If that door does lead to the reactor room, the radiation will kill- During the filming of Buck Rogers in the 25th century, the cast and crew faced many challenges. The show's star Gil Gerard was known for his pranks on set. One time, he even filled his colleague's car with popcorn. The spaceships used in the series were a sight to behold. However, they were not as high-tech as they seemed. The iconic Starfighter, for instance, was made from a Ford Pinto and a dune buggy. The actress who played Princess Ardala, Pamela Hensley, had an interesting experience during the filming of the first episode. While filming a scene where she was supposed to be unconscious, she actually fainted for real. It turned out that she had been working 18-hour days and was severely dehydrated. Despite the long hours and challenges, the cast and crew formed a close-knit community. They would often have dinner together and share stories from their personal lives. Gerard even taught some of his co-stars how to ride motorcycles during their downtime. One of the most memorable moments from the set was when the cast and crew got to meet NASA astronauts. The astronauts were fascinated by the show and even gave the production team some advice on how to make the spaceships look more realistic. In the end, Buck Rogers in the 25th century became a beloved classic, thanks in part to the camaraderie and hard work of the cast and crew. Their stories behind the scenes are just as captivating as the show itself. Now for the sightseeing shuttle with your Quad Relations Director. Buck Rogers and the 25th Century, the 1979 TV series, holds a significant place in film history. As one of the earliest space opera shows, it laid the groundwork for the popular science fiction narratives we see today. Its blend of adventure, humor, and special effects captured the imagination of audiences, leaving a lasting impact on the genre. The series followed the story of a 20th century astronaut, Buck Rogers, who awakens in the 25th century after being frozen in space. This narrative device, which has since been used in various forms of media, allowed for a fascinating exploration of the future through the eyes of a character from the past. Buck Rogers in the 25th century also played a crucial role in the development of visual effects. Its use of early computer-generated imagery 
and model spaceships was innovative for its time, paving the way for more sophisticated effects in future science fiction productions. The show's influence extended beyond its own run, inspiring subsequent works such as the 1980s cartoon series Buck Rogers and the 29 video game Bionic Commando Rearmed. Additionally, the character of Buck Rogers has become an archetype in the science fiction genre, representing the time-lost hero navigating a strange and advanced future. In essence, Buck Rogers in the 25th century served as a stepping stone in the world of science fiction storytelling, pushing the boundaries of visual effects and leaving a lasting legacy for future filmmakers to build upon. Dr. Moray and his aides. Revisiting the 1979 TV series Buck Rogers in the 25th century can spark a wave of nostalgia, taking us back to a different era of science fiction. Did you have a favorite episode or character from the show? Perhaps you were captivated by the futuristic settings, or maybe the thrilling space adventures left a mark on you. We'd love to hear about your experiences and memories related to this iconic series. How did it impact you personally? Did it influence your perspective on cinema or inspire your imagination in any way? Share your stories with us and engage in a conversation with like-minded cinema enthusiasts. If you enjoyed this journey down memory lane, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic explorations. Your support helps us create a vibrant community where we can all cherish and discuss our favorite film and TV memories. So, let's get the conversation started. Picture yourself back in the 25th century with Buck Rogers. Yes. Negative, no thanks. Not today, princess. Don't be nervous.